Dear Dr. Valencia, a most disheartening setback struck me today. Due to circumstances I should have foreseen, but never expected, it would appear I'm without a home. It all began when I met up with a most enchanting young lady. It was a late, hot summer afternoon. A rusty blue pickup had pulled into a gas station, and once it grew still, three tiny stowaways disembarked, unnoticed by the great ape as he refilled his tank. They scurried for the nearest cover, in the shadow of a great, rumbling ice machine, and took shelter against the side of the building. Oh, did it have to be another motorized thing? Stu the Shrew groaned, holding his ears. Wasn't it bad enough riding in that rumbler all day and night? Would you rather be caught by the great apes? Monster, a hulking, hairless mouse carrying a halberd, growled back. Well, some of them keep mice as pets, you know. I wouldn't mind sitting around all day, three square meals, just for being me. But you're not a mouse. You're a shrew. Y'all gotta keep on reminding me of that. The one level head amongst them may have agreed equally with both sides of the discussion, had she been paying attention. She, however, was more concerned with where to go next. Elizabeth Hartley, schoolmarm turned drifter, a pretty, by mouse standards, little thing with a tiny red cloak wrapped about her shoulders, peered out from under the ice machine and drank in the unfamiliar scenery. Before her rose forbidding, ruddy mountains of brick and mortar, the great hills of giant ants, the dwellings of great apes. Curiosity overwhelmed Elizabeth as she looked upon them. In the old days, in the old village, she had never accompanied the gatherers on their expeditions to scavenge food from the land of giants. I wonder if Don ever set foot in something like that, Elizabeth mused. To say she didn't miss her old suitor, or to say she no longer grieved for him, would have been far from the truth. However, thanks to the help of her bickering companions, she had long since shed her final tears for him. Now, as grand new worlds opened up before her, his memory sparked questions more often than pangs of loss. What might Don have said of this place, or of that site? Can we at least find another hiding spot? Stu finally blurted out. If I have to stay here another moment, my poor old head's gonna explode. Monster rolled his eyes. Finally, you are talking some sense. What? Y'all telling me you didn't want to stay here? Of course I didn't. Did you think the noise wasn't getting to me as well? Then why was y'all arguing with me? Now don't start that again. Hey, guys. The sound of Elizabeth's voice brought the matter to a screeching halt. <coughs> As both sets of eyes turned her way, Elizabeth motioned for Monster and Stu to join her at the far side of the ice machine. Well, what y'all waiting for? Stu nudged Monster in the side. Go see what she wants! Monster swallowed the impulse to respond. He was, after all, just as invested in the next course of action as Stu. Besides, he preferred Elizabeth's company to the shrews, and this was the perfect excuse to switch the two. That didn't stop him from issuing a low growl at the shrew, however, as he left. Stu just growled back, and a very exaggerated growl it was. Have you ever seen such a thing? Elizabeth asked, her eyes sparkling with awe and wonder. Monster was somewhat less impressed and a fair deal more practical as he laid eyes on the forbidding buildings. He shrugged. No, I can't say that I have, but it seems to me there should be more cover there than here. Elizabeth's heart leapt at the suggestion, but her time in the gorge, contending with all manner of hidden dangers, had taught her caution. So, you think we should head that way, say after dark? Monster looked back down at Elizabeth and thought for a moment. Then he nodded. I believe so. Ah, shoot! That mean we all gotta sit here and listen to this blasted machine all day, then? Stu groaned, holding his aching head in both hands. Elizabeth rubbed her throbbing forehead at the thought of it. That looks like the short of it. Ah, oh, great apes, just take me now! Stu wailed. 
If only they had known there was a dumpster right around the back of the gas station, many headaches might have been saved that day. Much to Elizabeth's surprise, the world didn't grow much quieter after dark, nor was there nearly as much cover of darkness as she had hoped. The road between the gas station and the buildings continued to roar with life. Street lamps cast enough light to rival the sun, leaving precious few dark places to conceal one's motions. Still, after an entire day of sitting under the thundering engine of an ice machine, the mice and the shrew had taken quite enough. Regardless of the risks, it was unanimously agreed that the time had come to move. Thus, keeping to the dark places, three tiny forms dashed out from under their hiding place and made for the nearest shadows. From there, it was just a short sprint to the street and the shelter of the curb. Dozens of machines of the great apes rushed past, carrying with them a hot, smoky wind, which nearly choked the three rodents with every pass. Somewhere, high above, one light clicked off and another lit up. The steady procession of machines ground to a halt, and our little friends saw their chance. A long, perilous chance as they dashed across the street. The other side could not have greeted them soon enough. Stu, boosted by Elizabeth, who stood on Monster's shoulders, peered over the side of the curb and called back down. Okay, I'll clear. With that, he hopped up over the side and turned around to pull Elizabeth after him. Monster, the largest of the three, clambered up on his own. Not that Stu would have offered to help, and Elizabeth could not have hauled him up by herself. From there, the three made for the cover of a shady alley, and that was where the trouble started. A multitude of eyes gazed down upon the trio as they darted into the alley, from perches high above on fire escapes, out from under trash can lids, and up from storm drains. As Elizabeth and her friends took cover beside a nearby dumpster, hundreds of feet scurried about as the watchers moved to get a better view. Monster sniffed at the air. I don't recognize these smells. We should proceed with caution. I don't think we need to recognize their smells, Elizabeth whispered. They remind me of the folks back home. Except way bigger, Stu chimed in. Monster growled. Rats. Elizabeth set a reassuring hand on Monster's arm, gently pushing down and eased his weapon into a less threatening posture. Rats are just like us, like mice. Stu rolled his eyes. Except way bigger! Elizabeth went on, ignoring the shrew. As long as we aren't threatened, we should try to be friendly. Yes, friendly! A quivering, weaselly voice spoke up from behind a matchbox. We like friendly around here. <laughs> a somewhat unsettling little mouse lifted his head and flashed a crooked grin at Elizabeth. He had a lazy left eye, which drifted off-center and appeared to move with a mind of its own. It briefly looked over Stu, and then came to rest on Monster for a time. His right eye, however, remained firmly focused on Elizabeth. Elizabeth gulped and forced a warm smile. And I take it you're friendly? Oh, very friendly, beautiful lady. There was an ominous sound of clattering overhead, as dozens of black shapes scurried to the nearest end of the fire escape to look down at the proceedings below. Somewhere in the dark, a trash can fell over, spilling its contents across the ground while its occupants scampered to the near end of the alley, just out of the light of the street lamps. The audience was growing. Monster glanced upward, then across the alley to the more immediate threat. Don't be worried, the odd mouse added, sensing the newcomer's unease. You're in no danger, especially you, beautiful lady. Elizabeth held her face firm. Is there a reason I would think otherwise? The odd mouse let out a faltering laugh. <laughs> of course not! I have connections! I'm going to be a real big shot one day. They won't do anything, <laughs> unless I tell them to. 
Monster raised his halberd again, letting the lamplight flicker off its blade. That sounded like a threat. No, no, I would never threaten the beautiful lady. And what about my friends? Elizabeth asked. The odd mouse giggled. <laughs> I'm friendly if they're friendly. We're friendly, we're friendly, a very unsettled stew exclaimed. Elizabeth, ever practical, kept her head about her. And who might you be? The odd mouse flashed a toothy grin. Oh, a beautiful lady like you, curious about a little nobody like me. I'm so very touched. <laughs> a name for a name? I'm Elizabeth Hartley. And you? The odd mouse wrung his hands, a look of bliss crossing his face. Mm, Michael Laurie, dear lady. I, but me and the boys call him Mickey the Towel, chuckled a rat, slouching just around the corner of the dumpster. There was a half-smoked cigar clenched in his teeth, a bowler pulled low over his brow, and he wore a black, sleeveless jacket with a skull and crossbones printed on the back. A conspicuous silver chain lay coiled like a sash across his chest. Want to know why we call him Mickey the Towel? At this, he seized the mouse off the ground and blew his nose into Mickey's back. Oh, you shouldn't do that, Bilge. I'm going to be a big shot. I'm... Yeah, yeah, you're going to be in the bleeding movies, and everyone's going to line up to kiss your tail, and I'm going to be very sorry when you stick your contacts on me. The rat kicked Mickey in the side, sending the little mouse crashing into a wall. So sick him, boyo. Then find new ones, because I'm going to bloody kill him. Leaning close, he added, And don't call me Bilge. Straightening up to his full, impressive height, the rat grinned savagely at Elizabeth. The name's Dawson. William Dawson. Willie to the ladies. Bill from the bilge to everyone else. Mickey muttered. He squeaked with pain as Bill pressed the burning tip of his cigar into Mickey's cheek. This one don't seem friendly to me, Stu whispered to Monster. Oh, I'm plenty friendly, long as you don't cross me. Elizabeth held up a hand, cutting off Monster as he began to growl. Then there's no problem. We're not looking to cross anyone. Bill leaned against the wall, leering hungrily from under his bowler at Elizabeth. Glad to hear it, love. The big cheese don't care much for troublemakers. Big cheese? Elizabeth repeated. I assume you're referring to yourself. Bill's expression changed. The force left his eyes, and his grin nearly flipped upside down. Above and all around, there arose a sound of low chatter, and then there was silence as if the alley itself were holding its breath. Bill's gaze drifted upwards as he spoke next, as if he were addressing not Elizabeth, but someone far above him. Nah, I'm not the big cheese. I'm just muscle. Just hired muscle. And I'm okay with that. I like it. Got no plans of doing nothing else. Yet the air remained heavy and oppressive, as the weight of hundreds of eyes pressed down not just on Bill and Mickey, but on Elizabeth and her companions as well. Monster whispered to Elizabeth out the side of his mouth, I suspect it would be wise to leave. Quickly. Elizabeth nodded her agreement. Stu, every bit as eager, if not more so, darted around the side of the dumpster, intent on fleeing further down the alley. The crowd of mice and street rats waiting for him, however, had other ideas. They pressed in on all sides, forming an impassable wall. What? Bill grinned. Leaving so soon? It's just as we were all getting so bloody friendly. <laughs> it's too soon to leave, Mickey added with a low chuckle. Stay here a while. Stay friendly. I like friendly. As he said it, both his eyes trained themselves firmly on Elizabeth. Very friendly. Bill flicked his cigar aside and flashed a yellowed grin at Elizabeth. We both do. Uh, monster, Stu spoke up. 
backing away from the oncoming crowd of rats. That would be a good time for a roar! Quick, Elizabeth whispered. Everyone together. In a single motion, she and Stu gathered close at Monster's back, while the much larger mouse planted the end of his halberd in the ground and loosed a savage howl. Mickey roared right back at him, somewhat pathetically in comparison, and Bill just laughed. Well, well, looks like Baldy wants to get rough. At this, Bill uncoiled his chain, letting it out and giving it several whip-like practice swings. Fine by me, then. I've been itching for some action all night. A cheer of excitement went up from the fire escape, and on the ground, a swarm of rats surged out of the shadows, forming a broad circle around the five rodents. Mickey laughed and backed away, vanishing into the crowd of bodies. Bill, meanwhile, strutted around the edge of the circle, whipping his chain back and forth, slowly easing into a rhythm. Stay close, Monster growled. That's right, Johnny, Bill taunted. Everybody stay in nice and tight. Makes it easier for me to hit something. To emphasize his point, he lashed out with the chain, swiping just above Monster's head. Monster didn't so much as flinch. He kept his weapon straight and low, sidling around Elizabeth and Stu, keeping himself between them and Bill. From somewhere in the crowd there came a loud, Boo! accompanied by a rotten, flying tomato, which struck Monster squarely in the side of the head. He staggered in surprise, and then Bill struck. The chain whipped out of the night, wrapping itself firmly around Monster's neck. Bill gave a sharp tug, wrenching Monster clear off his feet and sending the large mouse tumbling to the ground. All around, the crowd erupted into cheers as Bill lunged, the chain sliding through his fingers as he extended the length at the other end. Yet as he bore down on Monster, the mouse abruptly came up, Halberd rising with him, and the flat side of the blade struck Bill in the face with a resounding clang, toppling the rat to the ground. The opposite end of the chain whipped low, catching Monster around the ankles. Another sharp tug yanked Monster's feet out from under him and sent him hurtling down on his back. In an instant, Bill regained his feet, and seizing hold of the center of the chain, gave a great heave. Monster was wrenched from the ground and whipped clear over Bill's head. He landed on his face with an awful crash. Bill laughed as he pressed a foot against Monster's shoulders and drew back on the chain with both hands. This is what I do to tough guys, Baldy! Monster gagged as the chain tightened about his throat. I bleed and kill him! That was when Elizabeth flew into motion. Much as she had done not that long ago with Monster, she charged for Bill and scampered clear up his back. Oi, what? Bill's voice died into a sickening gag as Elizabeth wrapped an arm around his neck and held on for dear life. From all around there came the sounds of angry jeering as rats and mice alike lobbed rotten vegetables at Elizabeth, from tomatoes to cabbages. The vast majority of them, however, missed their mark and hit Bill instead as he staggered in circles, trying to both shield himself from the barrage and rid his shoulders of the determined mouse at the same time. Bill clawed at Elizabeth's arm, managing to loosen her grip just enough to get off a shout. Mickey, get this bloody tart off me! Mickey paused a moment, weighing his options. While he enjoyed watching Bill suffer, he was not so keen on the likely consequences once the fight ended, so he rushed to the rat's aid. Just not too quickly. Monster, in the meantime, was no longer held down. Chains trailing from his neck and legs, he rose to his feet and grasped his halberd once more. Elizabeth, get down! Elizabeth barely had a chance to wonder why. Monster rammed the shaft of his halberd into Bill's stomach. As the rat doubled over in pain, the halberd's blade spun high and came rushing down like an executioner's axe. Elizabeth gave a frightened yelp and leapt from Bill's shoulders, just as the halberd struck. Bill hit the ground with a dull thud. Every rat in the crowd gasped. The mice shielded their eyes. Mickey stopped short in his tracks. Bill, though badly dazed, however, was otherwise unharmed. 
It had been the blunt backside of the halberd's head that struck him, and not the cutting blade. Stay down, Monster barked. He pulled the chain from around his neck and flung it aside with a clatter. Elizabeth, Stu, let's get out of here. There was a click and a light swish in the dark, and then Elizabeth felt the cold steel of a knife against her throat. Oh, you friendly people aren't going anywhere. No. Monster turned to see Mickey with one hand tightly gripping Elizabeth's shoulder, the other pressing a switchblade against her neck. Drop the axe, big boy, or I cut the beautiful lady, and that would be such a shame. Monster regarded Mickey for a time. With a low growl, he cast his weapon aside. It struck the ground with a loud clatter. All around him, the rats broke out into cheers. You too, Tiny! Don't move a muscle! Stu threw up his hands in surrender. I'm not moving! But you can move, Mickey whispered in Elizabeth's ear. I insist. Elizabeth felt the blade press closer as Mickey inched backwards, forcing her to back out of the circle with him. Rats closed in around them, pressing in on their sides and then in front. The last thing Elizabeth saw was Bill regaining his feet. Monster! She cried. Behind you! Monster turned around just in time to see Bill's fist flying into his face. Then the rats closed in front of Elizabeth, and she saw no more of the fight. Judging by the sounds of cheering, however, she could guess at what happened. Beyond the wall of bodies, Elizabeth could hear the sounds of chains rattling, of thud after thud, of metal against skin, and monsters' agonized howls. At that moment, all Elizabeth could think of was getting back in the circle. She didn't know what she would do, or what she could do, but she had to be there. With a sudden flash of her free hand, she yanked Mickey's hand away from her throat, not far, for Mickey was a considerably stronger mouse than Elizabeth, but far enough. Mickey let out a cry of surprise and pain as Elizabeth bit into his hand. The knife clattered to the ground while Mickey doubled over, clutching his bleeding palm. Elizabeth took her chance and rushed for the crowd of rats. However, there were far too many of them, packed far too tightly together. Elizabeth couldn't get through. From the darkness behind her... Elizabeth heard a low, shaking, angry voice. It wasn't very friendly, lady. Elizabeth looked over her shoulder to see Mickey licking his bloody hand clean as he bent towards the ground, grabbing his knife with the other hand. Elizabeth gulped and inched away from the dense crowd of rats. The time to fight was lost. Now was the time to run. Mickey flipped and whipped the knife around his fingers, every bit as adept with his left hand as with his right. Now I'm going to have to <laughs> punish you, he giggled madly as he said it. Then I'll get very friendly. <laughs> the grin on his face vanished, and with a savage snarl, Mickey lunged forward. Elizabeth darted aside and fled further down the alley. The sounds of fighting and cheering faded behind her as she dashed through the shadows, her path lit only by a lonely street lamp at the far end. Somewhere behind her, she heard a vicious little voice calling after her. Run if you like. I'll find you, Miss Hartley. I'll find you, and I'll cut you. I will find you. The night grew quiet. Elizabeth's ears pounded with the beating of her heart and the rustling of garbage as she scrambled for cover amid overfilled trash bags and other refuse. She glanced back from under the cover of a pile of newspapers and saw only the dark alley behind her. Shivering, despite the summer heat, Elizabeth retreated into a nearby cardboard box. There, however, she found a welcome surprise. Hidden under the box, there was an opening smashed through the brickwork, leading inside the adjacent building. Her head still spinning, fueled by a rush of adrenaline, Elizabeth ducked inside. 
It was better than waiting in the alley for Mickey to find her. Inside, Elizabeth found herself standing between a wooden inner wall and the brick exterior, a multitude of cords and wires surging above, behind, and ahead of her. The rotten smells of the alley faded behind her as Elizabeth ventured further in, replaced instead by the sweet smells of fresh fruit, bread, and far more inside. But what about stew and monster? Elizabeth felt sick as she sank against a wall, eventually landing with a plop on the floor. Her heart plunged into her stomach. Gone, she gasped. Her eyes welled with tears. How can they be gone? It was like edge of the gorge all over again. Elizabeth buried her face in her hands and sobbed. It was as if her heart had just begun growing back, only to be torn out all over again. Somewhere in the back of her mind, she could hear Monster speaking his old words of advice. Raj and walk, but one foot in front of the other. Keep walking until your feet bleed, then rest and begin again the next day. Elizabeth nodded. She dried her eyes, wiped her nose on her cloak, and took a deep breath. Right. You're right. I'm no good to you just sitting here. With that, Elizabeth stood up, and though every fiber in her body screamed for her to do otherwise, she continued further into the building. She couldn't go back out into the alley, not with Mickey waiting for her. In time, Elizabeth came upon an exit, leading further inside. A hole had been chewed through the wood, opening up just behind some large metal structure. Clear and obvious to a mouse, or perhaps to a rat, but quite hidden from the great apes. It was as if the passage had been meticulously planned out, possibly an organized effort. Elizabeth gulped. Was this place also home to the rats? Had she just stumbled deeper into their realm? Perhaps Mickey was following her, even now. Perhaps he knew all about the opening. Elizabeth closed her eyes and breathed deeply. One foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. Elizabeth peered out of the hole, seeing only the wall to her back and a layer of metal ahead, a claustrophobic passage running between, she emerged. She crept to the right, where the light shone brightest. Beyond, the structure gave way to a massive, open chamber. Elizabeth's eyes grew wide at the sight of massive altars, piled high with various fruits and vegetables. Towering metal frames loomed above them, hung with dials and silver platforms. But as sweet as the smells of fruit were, there was something unnatural in the air as well. A clean, sterile, artificial scent, as if life itself had been wiped away. The light of street lamps shone in through windows off to Elizabeth's right, casting long shadows across the floor. Very quietly, Elizabeth crept along in the shadows. Tantalizing smells wafted down to her at every turn, but everything was always far beyond her reach. Elizabeth felt her stomach growl. Hush, she scolded herself. Now is not the time. Then she heard it. The sounds of feet somewhere far behind her. Someone else had come through the hole. Elizabeth's heart leapt into her throat as she scurried for cover, hiding behind the leg of a gigantic table laden with various breads. Very faintly, she heard someone humming a jaunty tune, often stopping and starting over again, as if he could only remember a few bits and pieces at a time. Out from behind a long metal display he appeared, emerging from the same place as Elizabeth. There was no mistaking his height. It was a rat. Not a large mouse, but a full-blown rat. From what Elizabeth could see, he was an especially large, heavy rat, and he was coming her way.